He wants so badly to talk about AEW. He snuck in there and started the debate again. Did you see that, Eric? You see, Eric, you see what he what? did? He what? started like, talking about the Young Bucks I'm and all these guys that have nothing to do with NXT. It's yeah, unbelievable. All I'm saying is, because we're talking about it, because it's a, it's a Wednesday Night War. Welcome, everybody, to the Ring Generals Podcast. My name is Nick Nina. Alongside me is EZE Eric. What's cooking? And, of course, the RKJ man. Let's talk that talk, y'all. Hypocritical Nick. What's good? What's good, man? Uh, we haven't done one of these recordings in a long time, so I'm si- excited we could all get together. Busy Chicago trip. Uh, uh, it was It was super good time. Yeah, no, it was a super good time. I'm sure you've seen the videos and all the stuff we did with social media with that, but that's in the past, and we're looking ahead to this weekend. We do have more wrestling to talk about, and that's what we're here to do today. Um, and we're here to talk about night, or excuse me, Clash of Champions. I can't even get the Same. name right, guys. Right. So yeah, but uh, yeah. yeah, it's funny that I don't get the name right because I wanted to start this. Normally, we'd start this podcast by going, you know, we're excited about this event. Let's look over some of the big matches and stuff like that. But guys, I think we can all agree. Do we even care about this event that much? Eric, I'm going to go ahead. The expression just, like, you guys can read the expression of me and the RKJ man. I'm pretty sure you, Nick. It's really, yeah. (laughs) I'd rather watch UFC Fight Night, okay? I'd rather watch that. Uh, even though it's on a Saturday, but <laughs> looking at the matches, man, it's really maybe I can name you like one or two matches, but the rest is just it feels like another SmackDown and Rob uh, show. It I can't really expect anything else. I mean, I don't see anything big changing, but other than that, that's going to head to the I, like I think we can all agree as us wrestling fans, this is just another tweak, another kind of like uh uh, Pay per view that just just you know makes adjustments to these pay, these uh, feuds and these matches that to see what's in store for next month. So really, it's just another uh, small pay per view like uh, Payback or Fatal Four Way or mm-hmm. or, pla- or pay per views like that. It's just another pay per view that just uh, doesn't really in a way just doesn't catch interest. Like if you have nothing going on a Sunday. And there's wrestling. Oh, well, you got Clash of Champions. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Hey, bad news. Now Sundays have football on it. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, look, look, I don't know why this, this pay-per-view is in my hometown in Charlotte, North Carolina. I don't know why we keep getting the mediocre shit, okay? We keep getting the – we got the mediocre team in the Carolina Panthers. We get the mediocre pay-per-view in Clash of Champions. I mean, I, I don't know why we keep getting this. But don't no forget about the Bobcats, too. Uh, Oh. Bobcats don't exist. It's the struggle. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh. Who cares? Who cares? You're just uh, who cares? I got the name wrong, Eric. That's, That's, how much the okay. That's the second time. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, I don't give a crap, and nobody gives a shit about this. Let's talk about what's going to happen in a couple weeks. The fr- the the first week of October, you have Monday Night Raw. Okay, then you take a break on Tuesday. Then Wednesday, you have the Wednesday Night Wars. You have AEW and NXT going head to head. Live and what's going to be a dope, dope, dope competition. Then Thursday, you take a break. Then Friday, you've got Impact moving to Access TV. Oh, yeah, Fox has SmackDown Live. Okay, and it's really becoming apparent now they're really pushing this thing because I saw it all over the Panthers game on Sunday. All right, and then Saturday, you take a break or whatnot. Oh, well, there's Wild Women of, Wild Women of Wrestling on Saturday, and then it's Sunday, you have, Hella, you have Hell in a Cell. OK, so that is one of the most important weeks in wrestling history since I've been a fan. And so we have Clash of Champions. Oh, and let's not forget that there's a rumored draft going on. Yeah. So does anybody care about this pay-per-view? No, they don't. And the matchups suck on this. And as always, the WWE is just giving us filler before they actually give us the good stuff. Filler lane. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, Remember we, that? Should fill, we should do filler lane, too, for the name of this, to be honest. I, I just I, <laughs> it, it is what it is like. If you if you want to give us something like this, then it is what it is. But I certainly am not looking forward to to this pay per view. There's no point. There's no point in having this when we're going to have a, a draft in a couple of weeks anyway, and it's gonna it's gonna just it's a good point. Yeah, it's gonna void everything out. It's gonna void everything out. So well, it's just yeah no. And, and when we look at this too, we have a SmackDown Tag Team Championship match 
it's SmackDown versus Raw in the match. You have the Raw Tag Team Championships where it's two guys that are fighting for the Universal Championship versus two random dudes in Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler. You have a Bailey Charlotte feud that came out of nowhere in my mind. I don't even know how that developed. Charles are gonna see that feud. Well, I'm just saying I'm just saying looking at like how the way it gel, like I don't even know how that became Nakamura versus the Miz. How long has that been built? Um, you know, Sasha and Bro, Becky, Sasha. I think it's too soon. Yeah. Um so Roman Yeah, we Roman met, and we met that? I think that's a WrestleMania match, but we'll talk well, about it. Yes, but yeah. So uh Reigns versus Rowan is a disappointment to that whole feud. That could have been a lot better. The women's tag team match is uh, essentially Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville were just put in the match because they're a tag team, right? Um, AJ Styles versus Cedric Alexander, I think, was developed on Raw this last week, right? Yeah. And 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 then you have Rollins and Braun Strowman and Kofi Kingston and Randy Orton, which have been you know, okay, built for you. Randy Orton and Kofi is the one I'm looking forward to the most. I, if I had to pick one match I'm watching this pay-per-view for, it's Randy and Kofi in a legitimate fight this time and not a, um, you know, a DQ at the end. But, you know, so like, see the way I just went through that? It's not, none of this is very enticing to me besides obviously Becky and Sasha because that's a great match. And I, and I think Kofi and Randy Orton, I don't really even care about Rollins and Stroma, what's your guys' thoughts after, you know, kind of just me reviewing the way this card looks? I'm probably going to just stand on what I said. It's just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. uh, you know, it's just filler lane, filler lane two, clash of the fillers, whatever, filler, clash, clash fillers. Clash I'm, of the fillers. Man, I, I'm, I'm just throwing names out there for our podcast. Yeah, but, so let's uh, talk about Cowboy Cerrone versus Justin Gaethje this Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's. <laughs> I mean, seriously, that's like I'm. I'm actually more interested in that and the no, NFL watch, to be honest. Watch that, you know? Why not? Yeah, oh, I mean, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure my NFL team's gonna get murdered this Sunday, but I still will watch that. Like, it's not, you know, what I'm saying I, I, yeah. I'm still more interested in that. Yeah, yeah, so. and uh, and I know Tyson Fury's fighting. Yeah, later on. Exactly. So we got. We we should just restart this podcast. And start talking about boxing and UFC. <laughs> what do we want to see come out of this card? Because obviously we do know there's a draft coming up soon. We know NXT is debuting, so there's going to be some guys moved to NXT. I've been hearing a lot of rumors about guys. Kevin Owens. Um, and then obviously the the uh, the wars happen in three weeks or so. So what does th- what does this card need to do? We're not going to go over all the matches, but what needs to happen at this card, in everybody's opinion, to make us interested in WWE TV? Before all this happens, like what does actually need to happen? Um, you know, as far as the Kofi Kingston and the Randy Orton situation goes, I think what needs to happen is that their feud. It, it I think that they're still going to keep continuing this feud uh, because this might go on to Hell in a Cell later on. It's the kind of match that I would see locked inside the Hell in a Cell, and so going into SmackDown, Fox. You know, Randy Orton and Kofi Kingston, those are two of your best guys that you have for SmackDown. So what you need to do is try to make this, you know, try to make this uh, fight serious, you know, this feud seriously. You know, stop having Kofi throw pancakes. You know, as much as I love him doing all that, I think Kofi needs to be serious about this sort of stuff because mm-hmm. Orton, he's a he's a dangerous uh, foe. I mean, we, we know that what Orton's capable of. And I know that Randy Orton's the kind of guy who, in a, you know, he's evolved throughout the years, and this feud has been continued, this feud has continued on from what it, it began in 2009, and then it's back again in this year. So it's almost, what, a, nine to ten years in a yeah, way. Yeah, they've been mentioning it in the storylines. So yeah. It's not just, it's not just uh, something that did happen ten years. They've been mentioning it and even replicating it on, on yeah. this week. Yeah, and, you know, and for Seth Rollins and Braun Strowman, uh, you know, I really, I feel like this feud is going to go, it's going to fade out. They're still going to be tag team champions. And Seth Rollins, he's going to, one way or another, he's going to have to come across Brock Lesnar again. You oh, okay. Know? Yeah, I mean, I don't know what's been happening with Brock. He looks like he's been, uh, you know, MIA as a, as of right now. But I wouldn't doubt that Lesnar's going to show up in this, in, in the, on this pay-per-view. Just to kind of spice up the pay-per-view. And then later on. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then later on, uh, if, if it's possible, if the Fox really needs, if they really need, you know, star power, they're gonna have to draft 
Brock Lesnar in SmackDown, where he started, you know, where he kind of mm-hmm. made his uh, name for himself in uh, on SmackDown back in 02 and 03 and 04. So you're, you're saying make them, as far as like the main feuds, especially with the men, make the guys more legitimate, make everybody kind of, there's no more of this hokey bullshit Becky Lynch, Seth Rollins stuff. You're going to have to. No more of the pancake throwing. Gonna, I, think lot, but I think AEW, although they do have some characters that are not serious, like the librarians and Orange Cassidy, I do think they're going to be more of a serious company. NXT is well, a lot yeah. more serious. And I think if Raw, and especially SmackDown moving to Fox is a little hokey, people are going to be like, you know, let's just watch that other like real looking stuff. So I yeah. kind of agree with you. I don't know about Brock Lesnar. I disagree with you because I think if he, I think he is going to go to SmackDown. So I don't see him getting involved in that, the Raw storyline. But I do like your 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 saying that uh, to make everybody kind of look more legitimate. Arkin, yeah. what do you what do you think is gonna what 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 do, what do you want to see come out of this whole pay per view since this is the last pay per view before all this stuff goes down? Surprises, that's all. I just want surprises. Do something that is going to be enough to get me interested to watch Raw and SmackDown the next couple of weeks before you make these big changes come October because you know. It, at this point in the game, when October hits, if you're not on your A game, if you're showing delivering, I, I'm not going to watch you. I'm not. And that goes for any show. So um, if you can't surprise us and do something legitimate to to make sure that we're all interested in the next couple of weeks and heading on to the to October, then, you know, they're not doing enough. They're not going to be doing enough for us to actually be interested in the first place. So point. surprise yeah. us. And uh uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But I'm telling you, these Fox promos are really starting to lead me in, starting to clue me in on who they're starting to see, who I'm starting to see are going to be main players in the company. And that could also give us previews for WrestleMania, too, and big pay-per-views and big storylines, too. Yeah, I think what I want to see out of this pay-per-view, it's, it's, it's kind of going off what Eric's saying. I, I want to see the right people win. I don't want to see these weird, controversial wins where there's like you don't like because to be honest i want i agree eric i do think that kofi and randy Orton are going to go to hell and sell i think randy Orton needs to win the title i think he needs to be going into that first smackdown um on fox as, as champ. the champion because people I, know who he is if I, he can lose it again at hell in a cell i think he just needs to win it before this because i think not a lot of people know who kofi kingston is you know randy Orton is 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 a social media meme He's popular. People know who he is. I don't see anybody ever talking about Kofi Kingston outside of the wrestling world. You know what's funny? Because when I looked at all those promos, those in-game promos, I saw no mention of Kofi Kingston on those. So, it's so interesting enough. I, I don't remember those promos. I've seen they them. Were, I haven't paid attention that much. They were playing Becky Lynch's music while they were doing the promo, and they were trying to make wrestling references, the announcers. So, I mean, I, I, I don't think we will see Kofi Kingston as champion going into to October. I think it's a definite yeah. we won't see him. But I'm saying they could – you could ju- you could have Kofi win at Hell in a Cell, and then, like, but like you know, they, they don't do rematches anymore, so that could just be the finish. It's inside Hell in a Cell. Orton has no stake to it at that point, and he could do something screwy with the Revival this Sunday and stuff like that and win it. But I just think that for rating's sake and what Fo- – you know Fox is in their ear – I think let's not screw with these companies that are that are coming in and buying the buying the stuff. Let's put Randy Orton as champion. And Kofi has looked a little worse against Randy than anyone else he's faced since Daniel Bryan. So it, it, it's it, it he Randy Orton has looked like the better guy. So so might as well give him the title. And then I think with Raw, I think Rollins needs to keep it. I don't think Strowman being champion is smart right now. I think Strowman can eventually win it. Uh, but I don't think he, I think Rollins is their star. You know, he's 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 been on their video game. He's he's a guy that's another guy on social media a lot that, that people hear about and stuff like that. So you go with him. And then I think, you know, I think they need to make this Becky Sasha thing special as well. They need to really take the best out of this storyline. I don't know where it would lead, but I think they need to really do something good at this pay per view and not just have some false weird finish or a DQ or anything like that. You know, I, I think that needs to be smart too. So I'm kind of going, I'm kind of basing it a little off. Eric kind of stole my thunder of what he said. Um, but I think, you know, everybody needs to be a little more legitimate. 
Let's get the right champions in there, and let's not have these hokey, unrealistic champions because you don't have that so far. Um, you know, looking at the other companies that are out there, you have more legitimate champions everywhere you look. So uh, it's you know. more cartoony these characters. That's why, and that's why these these the people like us we're not taking you know them seriously. We're not taking Kofi seriously. We're not taking the other wrestlers seriously. Yeah. You know, uh, at least Bray Wyatt's kind of balancing the two, but yeah. you know. Yeah, so at least he's he's doing that. But as far as like in general, a lot of the hokey segments and a lot of the uh, characters, they need to kind of be upgraded in a way. They uh, that's all I'm gonna, gonna yeah. ask. Like, uh, an upgrade is what. I they mean, need. even Braun Strowman kind of needs an upgrade in some yeah. way. You know what I'm saying? He just seems like this big guy that's fighting Seth Rollins, <laughs> right? It, there's no like, you know, Brock Lesnar's a big guy that you know. Oh shit. Like that guy could kill Seth in the ring. Like there, let's let's see what happens. I see Rollins kind of just tricking Braun and winning. You know what I'm saying? In real life, you're looking at a real life fight. Rollins would just find a way to win, right? I don't see that with Orton and Kofi. I see that more being like a legitimate. Like I don't know who's gonna win, yeah. and I think this Randy Orton guy is dope and he has a great finisher, and I want him to win. So might as well put him as champion. He can lose it to Hell in a Cell. Because, you know, more than likely people that watch Fox are just going to automatically buy Hell in a Cell that weekend. But if you've never watched it before. But, you know, I, I do agree. I, going back to what you said, the, the, the legitimacy thing is, is great. And it, it, I like what they did with Bailey, you know, making her a heel and making her – because her persona was the worst out of everybody's. Uh, just this nice person that was somehow was, the champion of the women. That doesn't yeah, make any it sense. it was dying down. It was dying down. So it's they, terrible. Yeah, they had to do something with – bailey's character yeah and because that audience how long can you keep up with that audience so you yeah. gotta like kind of tweak it up a little bit in order for that to you need to grow you know out of it in a way well, yeah because you saw you saw um on raw and smackdown if you guys watch the shows uh the the chants for bailey were a lot more on these shows like people actually cared about what bailey was doing in the ring and that women's match was awesome on raw uh, but people actually cared about bailey in yeah. that match, whereas you know a lot of other matches, that any Bailey segment was kind of almost fast forwardable the last couple months. Even when I was there, I didn't I didn't give a shit. Like when I went to a SmackDown, I didn't even care about Bailey. So, you know, it's good that they did that and they're starting on a good track. Sasha Banks looks a lot more legitimate. You know what I'm saying? Um, and Becky obviously looks like a badass. Mm. Uh, so you know, I think that the last piece of the cake is the the whole Kofi Kingston thing, and we could also see potentially. Maybe the New Day turn on Kofi as well this Sunday, which might be it. You know what I'm saying? Like, that might be a way of Randy Orton winning and, and, and keeping Kofi legitimate. And then you you ward Kofi off the title picture because obviously his best friends or friends literally just screwed him out of, you know, the title that they helped him win. So you could do something like that. Um, that would go into your thing, RKJ Man, the surprises as well. Um, but I'll give the, I've been talking a lot. I'll give you guys the floor. Is there anything else that you're looking forward to this pay-per-view? I think I said enough. As what, of right now. <laughs> I think it's time for Becky Lynch to lose the title. Um, obviously, she can't go over to SmackDown. I think she's going to SmackDown Live because I see a lot of promos with Becky Lynch. Isn't she already on SmackDown no, Live? No, she got moved to Raw. She got moved to Raw. She's a Raw. Oh, girl. you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad, my so, bad, my bad. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. honestly think that they're going to move her back to SmackDown Live just because of the promos that I'm seeing with her on there and the way they're promoting her and the fact she was even tweeting Bailey about it, saying how Bailey's an irrelevant champion because she's the one being seen on the SmackDown promos, not Bailey. So I, I think Becky Lynch has got to lose this championship to Sasha Banks on Sunday. I think it needs to happen. I think, honestly, to be honest with you, Becky Lynch has gotten a little bit stale, and she needs an opponent. She needs something to revitalize her character as the Sasha. main Sasha's that, too. Sasha needs to probably get away from Sasha. I think they need to be separated. And if they want to, possibly, they can come back to this. I agree. Yeah. But right now, I think if we're going to have legit brand split come October, I think they need to separate, and we need to have Sasha dominating Raw, and we need to have Becky Lynch dominating SmackDown. And what I'm looking forward to, hopefully, in the future, is maybe a Ronda, Ronda Rousey surprise return at the Royal Rumble. And maybe that can reignite the Becky Lynch, Ronda Rousey feud maybe on SmackDown side because you heard rumors that Fox wanted Ronda Rousey too on that show too. She so needs to, She needs to heal her hand first. <laughs> well, I, uh, yeah. I mean – Yeah, holy shit. 
what happened to, it was obviously she hurt her hand at WrestleMania, but yeah. oh my goodness, what I it's so unfortunate what happened to her too. Yeah. Like like that just it's a scary she almost lost her finger. Like that's not you know, that's you not, can't wrestle like that's uh, and then uh, it's hard, hard to think about again. That's career ending, man. Trying to get pregnant yeah. too. You're trying to have a family too. So I mean, I don't know if we're gonna see Ronda Rousey, but I do think if 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 this whole thing works out, we could get in the future a Sheena Baszler, Becky Lynch feud, which is what I'm hoping we're going to get in the future. Um, if well, they- if NXT, because I wanted to jump to what we think, because NXT does debut uh, next week, correct? September 18th, yes. Yeah, so it debuts next week. So I do want to get into what we want to, is, is like, is NXT going to be a legitimate brand now like are, is it are they going to be competing at the royal rumble and are they going to be at wrestlemania and stuff like that competing at royal rumbles though they've been competing at royal rumbles for but a- not no but they don't have an nxt championship match at royal rumble that's what you know what i'm saying like are they going to be defending these titles on wwe main pay-per-views like wrestlemania or because if they have their own they're not truly a brand like they're still going to do the takeovers and none of the guys are ever on wwe tv then it's going to be different, regardless of that point, because we can get on that and we can see what happens with that. What do we want to let's switch topics away from Clash of Champions? Because I think we've talked enough about that. What needs to happen with NXT this wins? Like, like obviously the last show has happened. You know, um, they're setting up some big time matches for the for the first couple shows. Are there specific guys that need to go to NXT? Uh, what needs to happen, guys? Well, if if I remember correctly, on SmackDown, Kevin Owens got fired by Shane McMahon. Yeah, so yeah. we might see Kevin there on NXT at some Love point. Uh, you know, yeah, so we'll, we might see him there. And I did see, and shout out to you, Jesse Chaparro, for sending me this. Uh, Johnny Gargano said that he's not moving to the main roster because he thinks that he's not. he's been doing so much for NXT. He gave everything he got in the ring for that brand and to him he said that moving up to the main roster is dead so he says that it doesn't even matter anymore there is no main roster they are the main roster yeah so well thanks to well thanks to guys like us we kind of made them you know we made them like that i will take credit for nxt yeah there you go (laughs) (laughs) maybe uh, a little more maybe it will take a little more credit with with, with aw but but yeah yes yeah so like i said um in a way uh, Gargano wants to stay there, and I'm pretty sure most of these wrestlers want to stay there too. As of right now, I think that the that the first episode that they that they got, it's gonna be a, a banger show. Okay, to those out there who never had access to the network, who never been introduced to NXT, who never seen a link of NXT, it's gonna be it's gonna start with a strong episode. You know, surprises. We might see you know one hell you know awesome matches, five star matches, and you know we'll see where we go from there. And because as of right now, like it, it, we're, we're, we're we expect more from NXT for that to happen. Yeah. Once they go set the, the second of October, I think things start to really really change. So that's all I know as of right now. Uh, the, their next big pay per view NXT is War Games. That's in November. I'm ex- uh, I'm definitely excited for that one. Uh, really? No. Yeah, November, right? Heard- NXT is pay per view. Because I, I heard a rumor going around. Uh, uh, I don't know. We'll talk about it later. I heard a rumor going around that apparently NXT's takeovers are not going to be on the same card as WWE pay per views, and they're going to put it on different weekends. That makes I think, sense. So War Games, I think, probably still exists, but they took away the Royal Rumble one, I think, and now it's WWE Worlds Collides. So now it's not. So to make it even more legitimate, they're going to put it on a whole different weekend. Besides having it the night before a big pay per view, so it, that that kind of legitimizes the fact that NXT will definitely be the third brand. Keep keep going, Eric. Oh, I, yeah. Well, we'll probably get to that like later on in the future as soon as that happens. Um, so yeah, I I think I, we expect a lot more for the first episode, uh, especially for those out there who've never been introduced to it, and for those who are familiar with the brand NXT, we're gonna expect them to deliver pay-per-view quality on the uh first you know episode on the usa network and that's 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 really what i got for right now for nxt so my my biggest thing is the first couple weeks are going to be good shows 
not necessarily great. Um, in case you guys haven't heard this, NXT is only going to be going live for one hour for the next couple of weeks because Suits yeah. is actually going to, you know, it's ending. So they you're going to switch over to the network on that second hour. So I think they're going to be good shows. But I think that October 2nd, when it debuts against AEW on TNT, I mean, I think you're going to get a phenomenal show. It, it, you know, oh, that not, but that, I just can't wait for that. I and, can't wait. So I've seen people even speculate that maybe NXT's become the number two brand, that maybe they've gotten more of a buzz behind them than SmackDown on Fox. You know, so I, I, that's how crazy it is right now. With NXT. In the wrestling community, yes. In general population, no, because Fox is getting the NFL ads. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's 18 million people that are seeing those ads. And it, you, no, 18 million people aren't watching USA Network. So I think at the end of the day, NXT is going to be fantastic. Um, my biggest thing is, and I, I've talked to you a little bit about this, Nick, is that the one thing when I look at AEW's roster compared to NXT rosters, I don't see that depth on AEW's roster. I agree. As NXT has guys there that we haven't even seen in the performance center or haven't seen on television as much as we should have seen that are going to be getting getting some great time on 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 NXT on USA Network. True. I do want to. I, I don't want to turn this into an AEW versus NXT thing, but are you kind of referencing the fact? So do you think NXT doesn't need to do much to their roster? Do you think they're just good as they are? Do you do you don't think they need any other? Any other guys? They don't need any other guys. They don't. Don't you, don't you think there are like like guys like Cesaro and maybe guys like Owens and Sami Zayn might be <laughs> might be better off on that 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 roster? You can occasionally bring them down, but you want to establish your own roster. You want to establish. You want to give credibility to your own. Yeah. Roster. The problem- I don't think people are going to be bringing down anymore, though. I don't think that's a thing anymore. I think the, if you're saying it's a third brand. Then the guys on Fox are on Fox. They're not going to allow their guys on Fox to be on USA Network, right? So you can't, you can't. That's what I'm saying. It, whoever ends up on NXT is on NXT. They and have- if there's another draft, that's what happens. But I don't think there's going to be. There's no more. This is not a minor league company anymore. You know, it's like it's like the XFL to the NFL. Like you're not going to be having NFL guys be sent down in the middle of the season. No, the XFL is going to try to compete with the NFL. Like they're going to try to take players eventually if they can succeed so i disagree with you on that i don't think people are going to be sent sent down anymore i think these have to be solidified rosters no i don't i don't want i don't think you should send anybody down i think what you should do though is establish your own guys and give credibility to your own guys and you should have a group of about five four to six guys who are your main nxt guys men and women who are your main people who you're going to build your show around Okay, and those are going to be your superstars, okay, permanently for that brand. And some of those yeah. people are going to have to stay on that brand for the rest of their careers and build that brand up. That's just how it is. I'm not disagree. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I just think there definitely can be some guys that can come to that roster. Eric, what were you going to say? You raised your hand. I was going to say uh, off topic, but mark it down. 2020 XFL. Antonio Brown's coming to the XFL. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good book end to the Antonio Brown stuff. I like that. I got another one. I hadn't thought of that. I hadn't thought of that before. Andrew Luck, 2020. If anything doesn't work XFL. out, come to XFL. Yeah. <laughs> that would be ama- that would actually be amazing. If he was, in fact, not in trouble for all the rape stuff and didn't yeah. go to prison, um, I think it would be great if the NFL blackballed him and he went to the XFL. I think that would be yeah, major shocker right there. Yeah. That'd be a major shocker. So, so Eric, do you think uh, do you think anybody should should go up, should go to NXT? I'm not gonna say go up or go down. Do you think anybody like on the roster needs it needs to go down there or or belongs down there? I, I feel like it's gonna become in a way like what they did for the rebranded version of ECW back in 06 when they brought in a lot of the guys from Raw and SmackDown to NXT, um, in a way, in some shape or form, it did work out on some of the parts, but the fact about, you know, and that's my other argument about ECW, you know, the name, you know, trying to, you know, insult my intelligence, but that's a that's a different argument. But as far as, like, the idea of bringing in, you know, working some of the, with some of the main guys from the main roster to work with the new guys like Mike Knox and CM Punk at the time, I thought it worked out great. Um for the people out there, for the wrestlers out there that it didn't that didn't work out, 
for Raw and SmackDown, like Authors of Pain, Kevin Owens, or any of the guys who are like a mid-card hell or mid-card limbo or whatever you, they're placed in, send them to NXT. And if it doesn't work, work out for NXT, then um, at I don't that know. Point, I, at that point, it needs to. It's it's uh, really, it's almost like, well, what the hell are you doing? Then you either got two choices. Either they give, they give you a clown mask and then they r- let you r- prance around <laughs> You know, Raw and SmackDown, or number two, go to the East Coast and see what they what they got for you. You know, we'll see yeah. you at bar wrestling. Or we'll see you at bar wrestling. So you know, that, that's that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. We'll see it. It's, it's for sure. That's uh, that's a, that's another way. But for NXT, um, yeah, I mean, the legitim- legitimately, from what I see, I think I see Kevin Owens going to NXT, and maybe a guy like Samoa Joe. If it didn't work out for Samoa Joe, I'd see him there. It, and you know some of the, and for the other guys eventually they'll get called up to Raw and SmackDown. Ah, the called up. See, I, I there's no, not. I they disagree. can avoid it's it. Not going to be called I mean, up. They, they, they no can avoid it. I mean, that. I mean they can avoid it. They can avoid it, but they'll probably offer them like a maybe a you know maybe yeah. a schedule or maybe some sort of uh, offer that they can't really refuse. That's true. That's actually interesting thing he brings up about the schedule. Is are Raw and SmackDown going to be able to keep running all of these live events? Is NXT's schedule going to be easier? Because that might be more enticing for everybody, right? A lot of the people that leave WWE, their biggest complaint is the schedule. Going back to the '90s, you know, what I'm saying a lot of people were like, "The schedule just sucks. We can't deal with it." So WCW came along and said, yeah, "You guys can work two days a week." And, and you're fine, right? Man, Whereas man. if NXT is saying, oh, everything's in Florida, right? Like nothing's really that far away. Occasionally we'll go on tours, but that's understandable. You're a pre- professional wrestler. If you can't travel, you don't belong in the business. But uh, that's a very interesting thing. They, like I think Raw and SmackDown, potentially there could be less live events for the quote unquote WWE shows if NXT is not doing the same thing. That's a very interesting part of this that nobody's talking about. Well, you also have to understand this, that apparently on NXT shows, you don't have to pay for travel. They pick you up in a bus. Whereas if you go to the main, when you go to the main roster, you have to pay for your own travel. So they, there, there's so many perks to being in NXT. You get travel, you, get, you go around on the wow. bus, come pick you up on the bus. You got catering there, of course. You got NXT. Other, I'm you got NXT. other things. You got the <laughs> I'm going to NXT, yeah. Things, right yeah. There. And you got to <laughs> You could, they've got a gym in there so you can train on your body. Then you can go in the ring and work there. I, And they're offering more money now because they're moving up to USA Network because USA Network is paying them more. So sold, You sold me on the gym part. All I right. Just, I just, I, <laughs> they'll have a bag there, Eric. They'll have a bag. You let's, sold me on the let's, gym, let's, man. <laughs> let's consider this, okay? Let's consider this. And I was really honestly – one. I said this a while ago. I said AEW is – honestly, I think they're picking a war with NXT. Think about this. NXT is the first first line of defense against AEW. That's who Vince is banking on. They're banking Wait. on NXT being the first line of defense against which AEW. Is let, crazy. Which let is me insane. ask you a question. If 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 AEW runs through NXT, what what do you think is going to happen then? Let's say after. Well, okay, but then we're looking way in the future though. I don't want to turn this into yeah. an AEW. Well, right we'll, we will have a special yeah. show. The yeah. week of a like you know what I'm saying we don't need to get on that way. I, I just wanted to ask specific questions about yeah. The, and of, NXT is debuting in, this week. Yeah, as of right now, it's it's like they're they're Sorry playing to burst chess. Bubble, right? <laughs> as, of, as of right now, they're playing chess. You know, they this ain't checkers. They're yeah, playing. this is all. Yeah, I I like, again, I don't need to, we don't need to be talking about oh if AEW wins or if WWE buy like that's not we'll talk about that. We, Arca Damon, I will do you a favor. I promise you we will have an AEW versus what? NXT debate with NXT shows behind us to, as evidence of how it's going to be. AEW shows. And AEW shows. Well, no, I'm saying the week of. Well, I'll, I'll personally, because I know you want to talk about this, but this podcast will end up oh. being an hour and a half, and we don't need that to happen. <laughs> so we got so we got a debate coming up, and then we got, we got a, so we got NXT and AEW debate coming up, and we got a Cardinals and uh, Panthers debate coming up. A hundred percent. I'm not really excited about talking about the Panthers. That's busy. Yeah, exactly. I told you. Yeah, you talking all this shit earlier today, and then okay. they, I didn't they blew it. I, you just talk. You just talk crazy. It's your team tied. I, think I said, team. Eric, this is what I said earlier, because we're going to continue this, because this was done in text. This wasn't done on social media. Ryan 
I said, plain and simple, the Cardinals are undefeated in, in some capacity. I didn't go, we, we won. I didn't say anything like that. I said, we are undefeated. A tie, Eric, if someone in soccer, because you are a soccer fan, if someone in soccer is tied, up soccer. ties, well, mm-hmm. that's, that's what the most ties happen. If someone has a tie, they are undefeated, correct? Yes, yes, that's see, true. See, see, it's a tie. It's yeah. undefeated. I didn't say they won. Unless, You're unless it's penalty. Anything. You tied Let's on the go to penalties. Look, <laughs> it doesn't happen in football. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll know, talk about this on your. We'll talk about this on Cover Two podcast. But, <laughs> but, it, point, yeah. but getting back to this NXT thing, what what's getting ready to happen is getting ready to be very interesting because NXT can throw so many guys at AEW with so many creative directions and so many unique things. And let's not forget what NXT has. They have Triple H. They have Shawn Michaels, and they have some of the other bright minds in this business that's been here for years. I mean, AEW, as much as I love them, as much as I want them to succeed, I think it's getting a little sketchy with having about six or seven people who are wrestling, who six and seven people all caught up trying to make a decision on these future, the future of these wrestlers and the future of these storylines. And what's going on now is these wrestlers are being asked to come up with their own things. Some wrestlers just they don't have the creative it's, mindset it's, as others. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how six or seven guys like Cody, the Young Bucks, Brandy, Tony Khan, all of them, they you know, all get in the room and make this decision. I don't know. It's something. He wants so badly to talk about AEW. He snuck in there and started the debate again. Did you see that, Eric? You see, Eric, you see what he what? did? He what? started what? talking about the Young Bucks I'm and so... all these guys that have nothing to do with NXT. It's what? unbelievable. All I'm saying is. Because we're talking about it, because it's a it's a Wednesday night war. Let's we're, talk about what we're where we're going this week. No, <laughs> well, this podcast is going very long, but I mean, look, man, it was, it's not that long. No, it's not that long. Let's talk about Reddit gone wild stories. All right, let's do yeah, it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Let's hey, talk hey, about man. how many points the Panthers scored tonight. Fourteen, which was less by thirteen points than the Cardinals this week. And yet you guys still tied. Okay, so let's let's bookend this. Uh, obviously, NXT is this week. Uh, we're excited. A lot more excited about that, obviously, than Clash of Champions. I don't believe. I mean, I know I'm going to be busy Sunday. Um, I, Ryan, I think I believe you're busy Sunday as well. Eric, I don't know if you even want to do a review for the, the Clash of Champions. I, I'm saying we don't have to. I would rather review NXT this Wednesday. You know, like this next Wednesday, to be honest, just because it has more of a. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I don't want to clutter with a bunch of content that, that, that not a lot of people care and, about, you know? And you know what? And I was going to do a stream of Night of Champions, but to be honest, I, I really don't a like... Point. I, it's WWE's fault. It's, it's, WWE. it's not your fault, Eric. It, it, it is, no. We're just less interested. And you didn't even come to Chicago with us to experience the, the AEW yeah. WrestleMania, which which I think clouded my mind a little bit while going into Ron's back for the last two weeks. You're seeing this from just watching the shows every week, and you're fatigued from kind of the BS. Like I, well, I understand. It's, it. Maybe it's that, or maybe it's like too much wrestling. You know, maybe it's too much. I wrestling. said this. Remember, yeah. I, I think I told you this too. I was like, "Hey, we're gonna get wrestled out if some of this stuff and, isn't good." And I'm like, "Oh, yeah." I kind of like, I kind of want to break. I like, I want to watch something else. Like there are times when I've, I, I say that, and especially after All Out and seeing more wrestling. I felt the same way, but um, yeah, just the stream just wasn't, I don't know. I mean, I, I have fun with the streams, no doubt about it. Definitely, I have fun with them, but just this one was just not, I'm just really not motivated to be doing it, or it's just the matches just don't really interest me on doing that. Unless I'll put it, you know, I'll put it on the YouTube comment section. I'll leave it up, I'll leave it up to the people. I'll leave it up to them. If they want me to do a stream, I'll do it. If, if no, then... If you want us to do a review as well, put it in the comments. I, it doesn't mean yeah. if someone wants us to do a review, we'll do the review. Whatever, yeah. As long as you say it for yeah. Sunday, obviously, we'll do the review. But, um, yeah, so I think this week, uh, barring some fanfare wanting us to do this, do this stuff, I think the next thing we're going to be doing is an NXT review. And uh, also be following our social media because Eric and I will be going to Bar Wrestling. Uh, I believe there's at least – two guys from AEW making their final appearances from Bar Wrestling, so we'll yeah. definitely have some good yeah. content. I know Peter Avalon Jungle. for sure. Jungle, Jungle Boy and Peter Avalon, maybe Scorpio Sky. Scorpio Sky, Sky. yeah. yeah. So yeah. all three of those guys are going to be making their last appearance for Bar Wrestling. 
uh, which we love, and I'm disappointed. Especially Peter Avalon's not going to be the, not going to be there anymore. Man, that guy's one of my favorites in the yeah. world to watch right now. And if you guys don't know Peter Avalon as the not the librarian, but as the as the stripper, it's okay. one of the funnest. It's one of the funnest things in wrestling, and I, I've lost about seven dollars to that man and, uh, throwing dollar bills in the ring. He's a good so, guy to track with too. It, you know, outside awesome. the thing. Yeah, he's awesome. A, really always good. nice. Talks to all the fans. Uh, everything. So. And Scorpio Sky took a shot with us for for God's sake oh, yeah, uh, at, yeah. at Starcast. So, um, you know, we'll, 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 that we're going to be doing that. Uh, we're also going to be going to uh, Ryan and I will be heading to Wow Women of Wrestling. If you guys can see that, it's probably backwards on the screen uh, on Thursday as well. So we'll get to see that. Tessa Blanchard leads that whole thing, and a bunch of the, the a bunch of the other more. Um, important and top wrestlers on the independent scene are on that show as well. Uh, I've never actually even seen a WoW taping on TV before as well, so I'm interested to see that personally yeah, on Thursday. Time. Yeah. So we'll have a lot going. Um, we'll obviously have to uh, – uh, Eric, we'll have to figure out a way to watch NXT uh, before Bar Wrestling. I have the USA yeah. Network app. So we'll be able to see that first yeah, hour. We'll have, we'll have to go to a restaurant and we'll have to go to Starbucks and watch this shit or something like that. But yeah. uh, um, so we'll be doing all that. So just content's coming even after this weekend. Uh, we're not going to be doing reviews for Clash Champions, but we will be, we will be providing some great stuff coming up this weekend. Um, NXT, Bar Wrestling, and Wow, Women of Wrestling will be there live. So and check out can't... our previous stuff too, our vlog. At Starcast, yep. right? Yep. And also our interview with Alex Zane in an IHOP, which was <laughs> it was. I so, don't remember it much, but it I, was good. I that that was a very interesting night. Yeah, I, yeah. I, got, I got a pancake chant. Eric started in the middle of the restaurant, like going to our seat. It, yeah. I, a pancake <laughs> chant started, and the whole the whole restaurant was chanting pancakes with me. I, I don't know. Yeah. You, that, yeah. Exactly. But, yeah. I also got I also oh. got almost hit by glass multiple times that night at that. Uh, yeah, I had to, I had to keep Nick from dying. I was like, Nick, there's glass right there. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, is we got to meet Orange Cassidy that night too, which was awesome. And he oh gave yeah, us, I got to ask he gave us a way better answer than he gave Chris Van Vliet. So take that, Chris. Uh, yeah, I asked him straight up. I was like, hey man, what do you think about this? I think it's interesting. His exact words. Bro, I don't even know what TNT is, bro. What is that, man? I, I can't wait to see how they're gonna integrate him on TNT, man. I can't wait. It's gonna be interesting, man. No. Oh, it was a, uh, it, it was good times. Um, but uh, yeah, so we'll be looking at that. Um, and we will also be posting about that um, Cowboy Cerrone Justin Gaethje fight. Probably a couple, just a couple posts, but not, not no reviews or anything. Because really, it's just that one fight on that card for yeah, UFC. Yeah, that one fight. Man, no, but that should be big. I mean, that's like what I like to call that fight, uh, just transferring to UFC really quickly, is uh, that's like Nate Diaz, Jorge Masvidal, like a minor league version of that. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, like, if you want to see a knockout, drag him out, brawl for five rounds, watch the Cerrone Gaethje fight, and that will preview for the MSG fight between Masvidal and Nate Diaz that will also be five rounds. So, that yeah. I'm comparing it to that. Those two fights are going to be amazing. And, this cowboy cowboy last time almost got his eye kicked out of his head. So that was a nasty that was a nasty yeah. fight, especially Holy when he shit. knows. And he he admitted it to himself that I should have never blew my nose my nose on the first. <laughs> oh god, bro, don't even look at the picture. Don't even like did that and the Ronda Rousey thing I still think about sometimes. And I'm like, oh, yeah. oh god. Terrible. I mean, I, I luckily I didn't see a lot the of weird things in your long time. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. I know I need <laughs> to stop. Uh it, the um you know I am thinking of though? I, I'm definitely thinking about real quick to bookend this podcast and transfer over and do some hype for uh, for my other podcast next week. I am looking forward to Kyler Murray running all over that Panthers defense and avoiding Luke Keekley. And I'm excited about Terrell Suggs and Chandler Jones smashing Cam Newton in half uh, next Sunday. So, uh, sorry, RKJ, man, but uh, we will no matter what have a better record than you guys. Uh, Save it for, week, so. for the cover two podcast, bro. <laughs> Save it for the coverage. Well, I have to have some. You're not talking to those shit, so I have to have some material I play as a, as a prep a for this. Day. It's been a long day for me. So <laughs> let me let me get some rest and get some food under me, and then let me think about what we could do to whoop your ass <laughs> oh, and get back to our winning ways. You gotta have a quarterback with a good shoulder. But uh, uh well, we'll we'll end this we'll end this podcast before we start talking about anything else. Nice um, yeah. So NXT next week. Class of Champions this Sunday, uh, Wow Women in Wrestling and Ball Wrestling, we will be 
talking about that, uh, all of them, this next week. So, still got wrestling to go. Uh, fun podcast, guys. Uh, RKJ, man, take it away. Hey, man, wherever you're at, raise a glass in the sky and salute the ring in the room.